Welcome to the National Institute for Health and Care Research Mentoring Programme and this professional development series. My name is Julie Haddock Miller and I'm one of the programme facilitators. And the topic for this session is purpose, direction and goals. We're going to be exploring those three aspects in more detail in this recording and also consider some reflective questions and I'm going to signpost some resources. Purpose and direction provide a focus for the mentoring relationship and provide momentum and often lead to change and transition. Goals provide a more specific focus to the mentoring relationship and the individual mentoring sessions or conversations. We're going to look at all three in more detail in this session. Now, the visual on the right hand side was created by my colleague, Professor David Klesebeck and his colleagues, and it help, helps us to understand what is uh, an effective mentoring relationship in terms of the influences. And what we see here on the right hand side is the horizontal axis is rapport and the vertical clarity of purpose. And what we're working towards in the mentoring relationship is that top right hand corner, which is regarded as the most effective space for mentoring relationships. So that's where we have a clarity of purpose, shared expectations, there's a momentum and an energy in the mentoring relationship. And we've also taken the time to develop high rapport. Now, it can take several meetings to establish a clear sense of purpose and direction. And of course, that might change as the relationship progresses and matures. But it's useful to have a starting point in the mentoring relationship to provide that focus. Going back to the visual, if we're in any of the other three quadrants in the visual, typically the mentoring relationship is less effective. So purpose and rapport are two of the most important influences, particularly towards the beginning of the mentoring relationship. Now, what I'd like to show you is a framework that has been around for many years, very well used and can help structure a mentoring session or a conversation. It can be used in an individual mentoring session or it can be used across the entirety of the mentoring relationship. It's referred to as the GROW model, and it's published in the text on the left-hand side here on the slide by Sir John Whitmore, Coaching for Performance. I'm going to take you through the four stages, uh, which are referred to as goal, reality, options, and will. And you may want to apply this in your mentoring conversations. So the setting of goals, it can be helpful at the beginning of the mentoring relationship to work with the mentee and the mentor to set the most important goal. Of course, there might be more than one, there might be several. It might be a case of prioritizing the goal. How specific or measurable is the goal? Does it need to be specific or measurable? And there's a series of questions here and more on the topic guide that you can use in this first stage. The second stage, reality. So where are you now in relation to the goal? What's the current reality? What's the current situation? And again, there's a series of questions that you can apply here in your mentoring conversations. Options. Of course, the purpose of this stage is to explore all options available without any inhibitors. And so again, a series of questions you might use here. So imagine you were having a chat with a role model. What would the role model suggest that you do? We're often able to advise others. It's often more difficult to advise ourselves. So sometimes putting ourselves in someone else's shoes can help us to consider another position or another view, another lens. And then the commitment to action. What might we do as a first step towards meeting the goal? So very much about the action that we take to move towards that goal, the will that we have, the commitment. On a scale of one to 10, how likely are we to take action? Now, a number of colleagues have said, typically anything less than eight 
we're very unlikely to take action. It simply won't happen. So we might be looking for more of a nine or a 10 in relation to commitment and will. We might also want to consider within the context of this framework, our priorities. And the question here on the right hand side is what I'm doing right now, how can we achieve my goals? Do I need to do it, defer it, delegate it, dump it? And this is a technique that is published in Techniques for Mentoring and Coaching by Natalie Lancer and colleagues, and very useful as a framework to help us think us through our priorities. So just to summarise, purpose, direction and goals, providing a focus for the mentoring relationship, providing momentum and a specific focus with that framework in relation to the individual mentoring sessions. I've provided here a number of reflective questions so you can take away and think about these. For example, how might you structure a mentoring meeting? Is it useful to use a framework such as the Gray model, or would you want a more fluid approach, for example? And some key resources, we have a topic guide that accompanies this session, and there are some links to further reading, and I've put some on the slide here that you might want to consider. As always, if you have any questions at all, you're welcome to contact the programme team at the development of support email here on the slide. Thanks so much.